Jadual harian Hana selalu sibuk. Ha? Jadi, saya kekal sihat dengan Vidasi. Dengan vitamin C yang cukup setiap hari. Tiada apa pun yang boleh menghalangi saya. Minumlah Vidasi. Perlindungan sistem imun anda. Good evening and welcome to Kini News. The government kicked off the national COVID-19 immunization program today with Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin getting the first jab. So if you want to get yours too, stick around for tonight's episode as we recap how you can sign up from just your smartphone. The national COVID-19 immunization program officially began today with Prime Minister Muhyiddin Yassin being the first individual in the country to receive the vaccine. Muhyiddin received the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine shot at the District Health Centre in Precinct 11, Putrajaya at around 2.40pm. The District Health Centre in Putrajaya is one of the vaccine dispensing centres identified for the immunisation programme. During the event, Muhyiddin also launched the vaccination registration programme through the MySajatra application. Users will need to update their MySajatra application to the latest version and answer some questions including vaccine consent, history of comorbidities, and close contact before submitting the application. Registration through the MySajatra application is one of the five registration methods provided by the government for the public to get the COVID-19 vaccination. Malaysia's national immunization program will be implemented in three phases. The implementation, which started two days earlier than originally scheduled, will see more than 500,000 frontliners receive the vaccine during the first phase, which will last until April. Phase 2 from April to August is for senior citizens aged 65 and above, high-risk groups and people with disabilities. Phase 3 is from May 2021 to February 2022 for those aged 18 and above. The government is targeting to get at least 80% of the population vaccinated to achieve herd immunity to curb and end the pandemic. According to the National COVID-19 Immunization Program Coordinating Minister Kari Jamaluddin, we are off to a head start as the program started two days earlier than originally scheduled. In fact, Kairi is even optimistic that we may even be completing it before the end of the year. The National COVID-19 Immunization Program could be completed before the end of this year, ahead of its projected completion date in February next year. This is according to the program's Coordinating Minister, Kairi Jamaluddin. In a program on RTM yesterday night, he said that this will depend on whether the government is able to secure the vaccine according to schedule. He said the government had signed agreements with several companies but still relies on the capacity of their manufacturing facilities abroad. And if they fulfill the agreement or contract, he is confident that the government can complete the program before the end of this year. Kari added that during the third phase, mega vaccination centres will also be established. The centres will be in stadiums and conference centres, which will enable more people to be vaccinated at one time. He said it would be the biggest phase in the programme. According to Kairi, the schedule of vaccine deliveries on Phase 3 will reach up to millions, and this was the reason why a large vaccination centre was needed. It will allow the government to complete the vaccinations without having to store the vaccines at vaccine storage centres. The Yang Di Pertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah granted an audience to Dewan Negara Speaker Rais Yatim and Dewan Rakyat Speaker Azhar Azizan Harun at Istana Negara today. Some updates on the parliament sitting were given during that meeting. The Yang Di Pertuan Agong Sultan Abdullah Sultan Ahmad Shah said that parliament can convene during a state of emergency. This came more than a month after a nationwide emergency was imposed in a bid to contain the spread of COVID-19. In a statement today, the Comptroller of the Royal Household, Ahmad Fadil Shamsuddin, said that the King had granted an audience to Dewan Negara Speaker, Raiz Yatim, and Dewan Rakyat Speaker, Azhar Azizan Harun, at Istana Negara today, and had stated his view that Parliament can convene on a date deemed suitable by the King upon the advice of the Prime Minister. Ahmad Fadil said this is as enshrined in subparagraph 141b of the Emergency Essential Powers Ordinance 2021 which states that Parliament should be called, prorogued and dissolved on a date as deemed appropriate by His Majesty on the advice of the Prime Minister. He added that the assumption by some quarters that the emergency proclamation is preventing Parliament from sitting is inaccurate. He said this was because the King had consented to the emergency on January 12 merely as a proactive measure to curb the COVID-19 outbreak which has claimed over 1,000 lives. 
As thousands of Malaysian students sat for their Sejarah SPM papers today, UMNO youth claimed that the Form 4 history textbook glorified communists and called on the Education Ministry to correct the quote, manipulated facts. UMNO youth has called on the Perikatan National Government to retract and correct the content of the Form 4 history textbook. In a post on Facebook today, its chief, Ashraf Wajdi Dusuki, claimed that the textbook glorified communists. In his post, he attached pictures of two pages of the book that looked at the radical Malay leftist leader's role in fighting for independence and the Malayan people's anti-Japanese army's battle against the Japanese occupation. He claimed that facts in the history textbook had been manipulated and said that it appears to be a planned effort during Harpan's time in power to sow the seeds of the Malaysian Malaysia ideology and to convince students that socialism and communism are not bad and were among the ideologies used to fight for independence. Ashraf said that UMNO's senior minister had been informed and will raise the matter in the cabinet for immediate action by the education minister. He added that the education ministry should retract the Form 4 textbooks and correct the manipulated facts about the country's history. Before we wrap up for the evening, here's a look at the national COVID-19 situation. The Health Ministry reported 3,545 new COVID-19 cases as of noon today, of which one is imported. Negeri Sembilan recorded 1,392 of the cases. This is the highest figure of any state today and accounts for 39.3% of the national total. Meanwhile, in the Klang Valley, Selangor recorded 581 cases and Kuala Lumpur had 381. This was followed by Sarawak, which had 353 new cases of COVID-19. There were 189 patients in the intensive care, with 88 requiring ventilator support. 12 new deaths were also recorded today, taking the total number of deaths from COVID-19 in the country to 1,088. The founder of dating platform Sugarbook has claimed trial to a charge of making statements conducive to public mischief. The founder of the Sugarbook dating platform, Chan Yu Bun, claimed trial at the Shah Alam Magistrate Court today. He pleaded not guilty on the charge of publishing statements with the intention of causing public mischief. This was over a post titled, Top 10 Sugar Baby Universities in Malaysia on TechNav. The charge is under Section 505B of the Penal Code for statements conducive to public mischief. It carries a maximum two years imprisonment or fine or both upon conviction. The court fixed bail at 10,000 ringgit with one surety. Chan was arrested on February 17th following police reports on the website after it listed 10 public and private universities with most students seeking sugar daddies. However, on the following day, the court dismissed the police's remand application on the suspect. He was re-arrested on the same day to facilitate investigations into rape and prostitution cases involving a university student. And that's a wrap for this evening. For more stories, go to kinetv.com. Don't forget you can also follow us on social media on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram to get the latest headlines. If you enjoy what we do, do support the channel by subscribing and also click on the bell icon so that you never miss any headlines again. If you're heading out, please don't forget your mask and if you can, do stay at home where you are able to. I'm Daniel Anthony. Thank you for watching and as always, stay safe Malaysia.